In today's tutorial, we are going to make a spring flower dishcloth. It's kind of three dimensional and it's really kind of a neat idea. Let's get started right after this. Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd as well as Yarnspirations.com. I'm your host Mikey. Today's tutorial we're going to work on the spring flower dishcloth and this is consisting of 11 round, rounds and we also have a leaf stem that is done afterward and it is three dimensional here on the flower part. What we have here is that we have a lot of words here but it's actually really quite simple when you break it down step by step and there's also crochet diagrams for those that wish to learn this. This is exactly what I like to follow when I'm doing these kind of things and we're gonna be following that as we go along as well. So we also have this uh, leaf stem on how to do it. You can see it's just chain work and then just working your way back because when you see it here you see it's kind of buried somewhat underneath of this so it looks like there's a lot more to it than there really is when you look at the crochet diagram element to it. So the yarn of choice today is the Lily Sugar and Cream or Bernat Handicrafter. They're both cotton yarns made by Yarnspirations. We're gonna need a five millimeter size H crochet hook today. These are cotton so you can use these as dish rags. You can also use them as tea towels, pot holders, etc. because it is cotton yarn and they come with a, ver a variety of very different colors including variegated and some twists and some stripes and it's really quite amazing yarn to work with. We're gonna be working with a different color palette than what's in the pattern today because you're not gonna be able to see white on the background here. So I'm gonna be changing the main area that appears white into a different color more like yellow. So without further ado let's start and work this project out together. I'm going to start off with some purple today and I'm gonna create a slip knot and we're gonna work our way through then all the rounds. Let's begin and put this onto the crochet hook. Remember it never counts as one. You are needing now two chain five. So one, two, three, four, five and coming into the very beginning just insert in to the first chain and pull through to create the center ring of your dishcloth. And let's move along to the next round. Keeping the same color we're gonna keep continue. We're gonna chain up one and then we're gonna put eight single crochets into the center of the ring. So just go right into the center, pull through and then just pull through two. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven, and eight. And I want to join this to the beginning single crochet that I started with in order to finalize that round off. Okay, so that was round number one. Let's move along to round number two keeping the same color. To start this round we're gonna chain one and coming into the same one that you joined in you're gonna put in two single crochets into every one of the stitches or sorry you're gonna put two single crochets into this stitch here and then uh, two single crochets into every one of the stitches going all the way around. Okay so just put in two singles into each one. So you can see it kind of starts off a little more slowly in the very beginning with doing some smaller stitches but this is what adds character to projects such as this. Okay so continuing all the way around so you should have a total of eight groups of two which is a total of 16 single crochets when you're done. So I'm gonna count because I think I'm pretty much done. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight and I'm just gonna join it to the top at the beginning. So you can see that there's still a gap here but it, there is no gap. It's just a, a visual effect. People put stuff in there and they shouldn't. So when you pull it together it looks all nice and closed. Keeping the same color we want to continue one more revolution of this color. So now what we want to do is just change the color of the yarn and we're gonna go to the main color and in this case I'm gonna be doing yellow so you can see it from the background. So I'm gonna show you how to fasten off is that I'm just gonna take my scissors cut about eight inches to twelve inches I cut extra the more than I should and I'm just gonna pull through and I'm just gonna weave these in and out of some of the colors. Okay so just out of some of the stitches sorry. So this is how I would do it when changing color and then you can uh, use a darning needle if you wish to be able to really secure it in. Remember if you use a darning needle you just have to pass it underneath three times back and forth three times and therefore it will be permanently locked in a position. Let's move along to round number three. 
So I'm gonna be yellow as my main color. Kinda complements it with the purple. Makes it kinda cheerful. And what I want to do is that I wanna come into any one of the single crochets. Okay, so just go into any one of them. And we have a repeat pattern on this one uh, for what you need to do. So just attach it with a slip stitch, chain one. And then I want you to put in two single crochets into the same stitch. And then the next one is just gonna be one single crochet by itself. Noticing that I'm putting the straggler down on top so it buries underneath. Okay, so the repeat pattern on this one here is that there's going to be two into the next, two singles into the next stitch. And then the next one is one single by itself. Okay, so that's the repeat pattern. So the next one has two. And the next one is just one by itself. So please do that same pattern and going all the way around. So if your math is done right, the last stitch will be, uh, the second last stitch will be two in there and the last one will be one single crochet standing by itself. And then you're just gonna join it to the beginning single crochet that you had started with, just like that. Okay, so that's what it would look like at this point. Let's move along to the next round. So you'll notice in the center here it comes like, it's almost like a, a pinwheel kind of idea. You can see what's going on here. So what's gonna happen visually, it's gonna be really quite interesting in this next round is that we're going to create the, the stitches here and then we're gonna skip some stitches. So in the next round we can fill it in with this alternative color which gives you the look that you're seeing here. So if this looks like a weird round to you, you can also see this is kind of in the pattern as well for when we're going to work on the diagram. So if you look at number four in the blue, Okay, so you can see that we're gonna start off with chaining a three, double crochet in the same and then chain two, skip two, one and two, go to the third and do it again and then chain two. And you can see that these are kinda twisted down over top and these are gonna be filling in that space to give you that visual look in the next round after this. So keeping the same color, we want to chain three as one of your double crochets and then double crochet into the same space you're now gonna chain two, one and two, skip two, one and two, go to the third and double crochet two more times into that one. Okay, so you're gonna see gapping spaces starting to appear and don't worry about it, we will fill those in next time. So chain two, skip two, one and two, and then two double crochets into the next one. Please do that same configuration going all the way around. So I'm coming up all the way back around to make sure I chain two before joining it to the top of the beginning chain three. You will should have a total what appears to be eight of these doubles. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. So now I want you to fasten this off. I've already shown you how to do that. So please fasten off and we're gonna rejoin another color here and to make it a little more interesting. So I'm gonna bring back my purple because it matches the center rings that I had started off with. And what I want to do is that you can pick any one of these doubles. Just go into the first one of the two. Okay, and we're going to obviously crochet in this direction. Let's fasten this on with the slip knot or slip stitch. I apologize for that. Okay, and then we're going to chain one and single crochet into the same spot. And then single crochet into the next double crochet. So here's where it's gonna get interesting. We're going to come down, you know we skipped over two every time we uh, went down here. So what we need to do is that we need to put in trebles every time we've uh, skipped over. Okay, so let's do this. So we're gonna wrap our hook twice and just kind of fold this out of, out of the way in the back and just go for the two stitches that are in the front here. Okay, so we've got one and you're gonna treble into the next. So you wrap the hook twice, don't forget to do that. And then you have to then come into the top of the next double crochet. And you're gonna single crochet into those spaces. So one and single crochet into the next double crochet and then treble back down. So coming down, going for the ones that you skipped. Okay, and treble into the next. and then single crochet in the next two double crochets. So please do that same idea going all the way around and this is round, uh, a great little round. It creates a beautiful optical illusion. So I'm coming up all the way around. I gotta fill in the final space with the trebles. Okay and once I get that last one done, I just gotta join it to the top, uh, beginning single crochet and I need to fasten off this yarn. So use your fastening off skills and just join it to the top, uh, beginning single crochet and then fasten this off. So this is what it looks like at this point and let's move along.
to the next round. And this is gonna be the flower petal round. So you gotta make sure you choose the right color of flower that you want for your particular dishcloth. So the next part of this tutorial what we're going to do is feature ourselves right in the front here and we're going to go on these petals. So these petals are actually three dimensional. They are just laying on top of the work. But so we have to concentrate on the front loop only. So when we go to look at the diagram here you can see here's where the petals are. You can see this. And you see how these got a loop that is down. Okay like a loop, like a um, half arc. That means that it's the front loop only. So when we're going to play with these we're gonna play in the front loops so that we can use the, the back loops then to work on it on other parts of this project so that we can get the background done afterward. So just stick with me kid and we're gonna get it done. So we're here's where we are and let's just start doing the petals next. So let's begin doing our first set of petals all the way around. It's a, well we only have one set really. So what I want you to do is that I want you to follow the yellow up. Okay, the yellow is the, the main color. Just follow it up and you want to insert into the purple one only into the front loop. So if you're new to crochet every stitch is made up of two strands. Okay, the first strand if you're doing that by itself is a front loop and the strand that's furthest away from you is called the back loop. So we wanna play within the front one because we're gonna come back to the back loops and then fill in the background. So let's insert it into the front loop only. And I want you just to join with a slip stitch, chain one and single crochet into the same front loop to begin. So here's how the petals are all made. We're gonna chain two and we are gonna uh, come back into the same stitch, okay? And we're gonna do trebles. So we're gonna wrap the hook twice into the same front loop and we're doing two trebles. And then we're gonna do the next front loop that's in the row, sorry in the round and there's gonna be two trebles there. So one and two. And then we need to chain to get back down to this area here. So we need to chain two and then single crochet into the same front loop as the last two trebles. So each one of these petals are just consisting of two loops only. So we're gonna uh, carry on. So we're going to come and we're gonna do a single crochet into the front loop only of the next two. So one and two and this will take you back over top of the next yellow that you see over here and we're gonna restart. So we come into the first one, single crochet to begin and then chain two and then two trebles into the same stitch. Okay, so that was one half of the petal. We're gonna come to the next front loop and we're gonna treble two times. And then we need to get back down to the space area. So we chain two and then single crochet into that same front loop. And then we move along again. So we come back down on the purple, single crochet in the front loop for the next two and then re-begin once again. So we start again by chain uh, single crochet, chain two, two trebles into the same front loop. Okay, we now move to the next front loop to do the other half of the petal. Okay, so come into the next one, wrap the hook twice for a treble. And then to get back down you have to chain two and single crochet in the same one. So please do that same idea going all the way around and then we're gonna have to change this color once again to start continuing along with this stitch cloth. So I'm coming up all the way back around and I'm just finishing off the last two single crochets before hitting that first petal and then all I just wanna do is to just attach it uh, with a slip stitch to the first single crochet that we started with. I wanna fasten off this color. We're done with this and here is the petals and you should have a total of eight. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven and eight. Let's move along to the next part. So we're now gonna move on to the next part of this tutorial and I've never seen this done before and I finally just seen it now and I wanna show you. So what we have here is that you can see that there is grayed out arrows that are pointing down. Okay, so what we're having here is that you can see that there's a loop going up. That is the back loop only and what I realized here is that I thought this was a stitch, these grayed out arrows, but what it's telling you to do is that all of this is happening in behind 
these petals. Okay, so when we go to work on this, we're just gonna pull these petals and go for the back loops only here. So it's just a way of doing a diagram here that is just really quite easy to read because they're just showing you with an arrow on where you need to go. So we're gonna start off uh, right behind a petal on the first one and then work our way and you can see it's chaining a three which is a double crochet. The next one is two double crochets into the back loop and then uh, the next one is one by itself and then two. So it's quite easy for round number seven. So let's begin and create a slip knot for round number seven. So you can only see one loop anyway when you pull these backwards. So just looking to where the one single crochet is and the two trebles on the first side of the pedal, turn it back and just go for the same loop that's on the other side. And you want to attach your yarn. So just join it with a, a slip stitch. So and then chain three which counts as a double crochet. So in the back loop on the next one here that's right here is that there's gonna be two double crochets. One and two. And continuing to pull these petals back so you can see it. So the next one you can see that they're all right here. The next one is gonna be one double crochet by itself. And the next one will be two double crochets. One and two. So the next one is one. And then the next one is two into the same one. So please do that same patterning going all the way around behind the petals on the back loops of this round. So coming up all the way back around, if you're playing your cards right, the last stitch will be two double crochets into the same one. And then you're just going to join it to the beginning chain three. Okay, so you're following the same idea going all the way around and the petals are still just laying down on flat. So we're just gonna leave this color on and we're gonna move up to round number eight. Right where you are st to start round number eight, just chain up three which counts as a double crochet. Coming into the next stitch available to you is going to be another double crochet by itself and then the next one has two double crochets in the same one. So the repeat pattern for round number eight is very simple. There's gonna be two double crochets standing by itself. So this is one and two and then the next one after that there's gonna be two into the same one. Okay, so two double crochets by itself and then the next one has two. Please do that all the way for this revolution. Coming up all the way back around, the last one will be two double crochets into the same stitch. And then just join it to the beginning chain three. So we're gonna keep this color going once again and let's move up to the next round. The petals are kinda folded in but once you're done you can just lay them out just like so. So let's uh, begin to do round number nine. Okay, round number nine we're gonna start off slightly different. We're gonna chain three which counts as a double crochet. We're gonna put two double crochets into the next one and then the repeat pattern is going to start. So in this round number nine there's gonna be four double crochets that are by itself. So one, two, three, and four and then there's gonna be two into the next one. So one, and two. So let's review that again. So the next four are by itself. So one, two, three, and four. And the reason why they do that is that the when you put it, uh, the slip stitching in the same spot all the time it causes all of the stitches to look imbalanced and so therefore it just gives it a better rounded look at the end. So please do that. So I gotta put two into the next one and then four again by itself. So continue that same patterning going all the way around. Okay and coming up all the way back around I have three stitches left that will each be uh, one double crochet by itself. And then we just join it to the beginning. So it's not like the other rounds where we finished off with two into the last one and that's because we started off slightly different from here. Let's move along to round number 10. So round number 10 we're gonna start off uh, chaining at three counts as a double crochet and then we need to double crochet into the next two and then there's gonna be two into the next one after that. So there's gonna be a two into this one here and the repeat pattern for this now that you've done that is that there's gonna be one, two, three, four, and five. There's gonna be five. So one, two, three, four, and five and then the next one is gonna be two into the same one. So you wanna do that same idea going all the way around. So five double crochets in a row and then the next one after that will be two double crochets. 
So the final two stitches in this revolution will be one double crochet each and then you're going to slip stitch it to the beginning top of the chain three. So you're gonna finish off this color. I've already shown you how to fasten off so please fasten off this color. We need to do one perimeter uh, border and then we're gonna work on the leaf that comes with this next. So let's begin to do the final trim. So the final trim is what kind of makes it really kind of nice and we want to start off and we wanna start off by chaining six. So one, two, three, four, five, and six. Whoops, six. And I wanna slip stitch to the beginning chain. Okay, so there is the loop to be able to hang this on anything if you want to. So coming to any one of the double, uh, sorry, any one of the double crochets around, just going in and you need to slip stitch. Okay, so just grabbing the yarn and just pull through, slip stitch. So with this whole revolution what we're going to do is we're gonna go into every one of the stitches and we're just gonna slip stitch our way all the way around. So just slip and slip and I'm putting that first strand in behind. I'm gonna have to use a darning needle to hide it but this is gonna make it appear that the slip stitching is sitting on top of the work and not around the outside which is kind of the nice effect. So please just slip stitch all the way around and then we're gonna fasten off and then we're gonna move to making the leaf part of this particular project. So I'm coming up all the way back around. I'm just slip stitching my way across and then I just want to join it to the beginning one that I had started with. Okay, so just kinda watch how this thing is turned. Make sure it's not doing anything weird and then just slip stitch and then using a darning needle just fasten this off and then we're gonna concentrate doing the leaf next. Okay, so here's what it looks like right now. I got my dangly thing up here. I got my flowers. So you just gotta kind of like shape it a little bit and uh, have it nice and sit down. So now it needs the leaf in order to finish this off. So let's uh, continue along with that in the pattern and let's do that next. So let's begin to do the leaf. You can follow the written instructions or you can just see what's going on here in this leaf stem diagram. You're gonna need a three and a half millimeter uh, size crochet hook today. And what is that size? That's a size E in US measurements if you're needing that. So you wanna do that so that the leaves are nice and tight. So you're gonna need some green yarn and let's begin to do the leaf next. So let's start doing the leaf. And we need to chain 23 to start and if you're looking at the diagram we're starting from the very bottom. Uh, so that when we do the chain we're actually gonna start from the bottom working our way up. So let's do 23. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23. So now we have now our 23. We now want to go third chain from the back. So one, two, and three and go in the back bumps. You'll notice that it looks like a serpent's tail. Go in the back bumps only and just slip stitch. And you need to slip stitch now into the next eight. So just working on the back loops, back bumps only. So one and it takes a little bit of time for two and three. We got four. We have five, six, seven, and eight. So now we're ready for our first leaf. To do this leaf, all we just need to do is that we need to chain six. So one, two, three, four, five, and six third one back again. So one, two, and three back bump only. So you're gonna do a slip stitch for the first one. Then you're going to do two half double crochets in a row. So one to the next one and one half double crochet into the next one after that. And then a slip stitch into the final. And we're gonna work back along the chain again. So coming back along the chain, the back uh, bumps only, you want to uh, slip stitch five times. So one, two, three, four, and five. And now we gotta do some chain work in order to make the next leaf. So the next leaf uh, going out is that we are looking at it here and we have to chain seven. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven and coming third one back. So one, two, and three, slip stitch. And 
and then half double crochet into the next, double crochet into the next one after that, half double crochet into the next, and then slip stitch into the final. And now we're gonna work back on the main chain again. So the main chain, uh, uh, next one is that we're going to um, slip stitch twice. So one and two and then we have to chain again. So we're gonna chain seven, one, two, three, four, five, six and seven and come back again to the third one, two and three. Go into the back for a slip stitch. Okay, the first one is gonna be half double crochet. The next one is a double crochet. It's, it's the exact same leap that you just did. And then a half double crochet. And then slip stitch into the final. And we're gonna work back onto the chain again. So we're just gonna slip stitch one time only and then work our way to the top of the peak. So the next one will be a, a half double crochet. So it's exactly what you've already do, doing. So half, okay, it'll be a double in the next. The next one is a half. And then the final one is a slip stitch. So we've worked our way all the way back up just like this. So what you can just do and you can see the leaves are right here is that you just wanna fasten this yarn off nicely and then using the same color we're gonna sew it to the actual dishcloth. So fasten these off and I'll be right back. So I have my project now back and I have my leaf all completely fastened off as you can see and all I wanna do is I wanna kinda make it like a peekaboo effect and I wanna come opposite to the hanging and I wanna just do it so it's kind of just slightly underneath the one petals like this. Okay, so I wanna just uh, make sure I strategically place those and then all I'm just gonna do is that I'm gonna take a darning needle with the same color string and I'm just going to look at the photo and see exactly how it's been positioned. So um, you can turn the leaves any kind of way that you would like to so you can just kind of do something kind of like artistic like that if you wish. It's completely up to you and on, on how you uh, to, uh, how you wanna place this item. So I want to just kinda come up underneath the leaf and coming on the back side with the darning needle is that I wanna come in and I wanna create a slip knot on this side of the string. So I'm gonna come up from the other side. So right through the project in the back. Uh, up through the leaf. Okay, I'm not gonna pull all the string in the back there. I wanna go back down through the leaf and because you're using the same color you can be a little bit sloppy with it I guess and put the slip knot on and just pull everything nice and tight. And so when you pull it tight it's gonna pull this knot into position and therefore you'll have a nice string attached. So all you're just gonna do is that you're gonna work in and out from the front to the back of just securing the leaves down just working your way across. So you will see the slip stitching or sorry I guess the sewing on the back side of this as you're going all the way along. But uh, all right, would you be surprised? Probably not. So let's just wanna keep on going. And depends how loose you wanna leave it on there too. That's completely up to you. But you're just gonna keep on going until it's completely sewed down. Now the petals are not sewed down at all. So they're just kinda resting there. So once you get these leaves settled down um, you can do kind of a really kind of a neat idea and just kind of be kind of artistic with it if you wish. Okay, so you can have a lot of fun with these kind of ideas and this would be how you would do it. Okay, so until next time I'm Mikey on behalf of the Crochet Crowd as well as Yarnspirations.com. Thanks for joining me today. It's called the Spring Flower Dishcloth. Hopefully you've enjoyed today's tutorial and I hope to see you again real soon. Bye bye.